In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather on this fourth Sunday of Lent, Laetare Sunday, let us truly enter into this Eucharistic liturgy with great joy, knowing that the Lord is with us, we bring troubled hearts to this altar, but we bring them to the Lord. Let us be strengthened in his light and grace as always. And so now as always, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. through your word, reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. 
In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest, who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers, And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness Rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. 
but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. From the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. A night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed, and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age. 
question him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin and you are trying to teach us. Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not all so blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a few words about the rather unusual circumstances of this Eucharistic liturgy, this Holy Mass that we celebrate on this fourth Sunday of the Lenten season, this Laetare, this joyful Sunday. It is unusual in the fact that I am speaking to all of you from the cathedral with the cathedral virtually empty, except for those who are assisting with the liturgy. Hopefully I find you in your homes with your family, warm and being taken care of in the midst of all of the challenges that we face. I have to mention in gratitude for all those who are assisting, and there's a great consolation for me and many who are part of the cathedral community and probably beyond. Mark Skirto singing. Many of us know him as a weatherman, but here in the cathedral, we know him as a dedicated servant of the liturgy, offering his beautiful voice as a cantor in many different settings for many years. And of course, Brian Barquet at the keyboard, the piano, Brian is a comfort as well for me personally, and I know for many of us who hear his beautiful music as it lifts our hearts, as the liturgy always does. We're grateful to have Deacon Keith Fournier, rather new to the diocese, but very much a part of our mission to proclaim the truth of Christ, especially during this year of the Eucharist. We heard the readings from Alice and Lowe, 
a beautiful doctor and a member of the community here who is involved in many ways. Many of you know Allison in her great work in the cathedral parish. Peyton Lowe, of course, serving as master of ceremonies and those behind the scenes offering the opportunity in the use of technology to reach out to the 33 counties of the diocese. I hope many of you are able to watch this liturgy and enter into it prayerfully as we pray together in the midst of darkness. How appropriate these readings, as we've all felt that darkness in ways that we've never before experienced. So let us look to the light. Let us look to the light that God's word brings. And let me make a special point that I've tried to make in other settings in this very unusual time when I've had to make the most difficult decision of my life as a bishop to close all of our liturgies to public worship. Let me assure you that the priests are offering Mass daily, at least once a day, in all of our communities. Our dedicated priests are at work celebrating the Eucharist and all of the sacraments. We need to remember that when that hunger to come to this altar and receive the body and blood of Christ as we normally do, when that hunger for our Lord grows strong, remember that he is with us and the word of God. He is the living word, the incarnate word. We all know that truth of our faith. But when you are longing to be fed by him, no, it's not exactly the same because we celebrate the gift of his real presence and we long to be fed by him. We should be fed by him. But let us turn to the word for this fourth Sunday of Lent and may it inspire us to go to confession, to repent of our sins and to purify our hearts for that day we hope in the very near future, when once again we can approach this altar and whatever altar throughout the diocese and receive the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. Let this hunger develop and deepen in your hearts because we've all lamented a time when too many don't appreciate the real presence of the Son of God in the Eucharist hunger for him, joyfully seek that opportunity to one day receive communion again. I think for many, it will probably, probably be like a first communion all over again with a much deeper understanding than most of us had as children when we first received our Lord. Let us hunger for him. And now to briefly look at the word of God, beautiful word as always for this fourth Sunday of Lent. First, from the book of Samuel, that familiar story of David, the one out in the field with the flock, a significant image. The shepherd is the one who is almost forgotten but ultimately, the Lord reaches out to him and anoints him to be the chosen one for the people of Israel at that time, a precursor to the great chosen one that is Jesus Christ, God's own son. David is a great image for us at this time, anointed by God, but still struggling with temptation and sin as we all do. I focus on the very last words of this passage from the 16th chapter of the book of Samuel. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. Brothers and sisters, let us ponder, let us reflect, let us pray, especially with our world turned upside down our schedules altered drastically. 
hopefully with a little more time for prayer on our hands, some empty space in our lives. Let us ponder the great gift of the sacraments, beginning with our baptism, when the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon each of us. We are not David, but we are all called to be disciples from that moment of baptism, when we too were anointed. Let us, like David, strive to follow the Lord, to be faithful, and to not be overcome by our temptations and sins, by our failings, but to repent as David did over and over again, living in the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord that rushed upon him. And then we can turn to St. Paul to the Ephesians, that beautiful imagery that we see so often in Scripture and especially during the Lenten season, the contrast of darkness and light. What I focus on in this reading from Ephesians is the specific way that it is said, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us take that into our hearts. Let us believe that Paul speaking to the Ephesians, these brand new disciples in the first century of the church, let us hear these words as our own. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. To me, the startling way that this is expressed in this translation of Paul to the Ephesians is worth pondering significantly. It doesn't just say we were in the darkness. We were influenced by the darkness. We were once darkness. That is a stark reminder of who we are without the Lord. We were reminded as we began this Lenten journey once again a few weeks ago that being darkness, we were merely dust, like ashes, lifeless, stark, and easily blown away by a breath of storm and wind. We were once darkness, but we now are light in the Lord. We are not just guided by the light, we are part of that light. And to the degree that we repent of our sins and seek the Lord more and more in our journey of life in this world, as difficult as it can become, it is a journey of growing in the light, growing to be who we are, not only seeking the light, but being light with the light of light, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. I believe in St. Paul's words, this is what he speaks of for all of us. And don't we live in a time when we need those words? You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. And then finally, this lengthy but beautiful passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 9. The very familiar story of the man born blind. What I focus on in this story is I encourage you to take the time to read it again and to ponder it more deeply. There is a lot built into this gospel passage. But what I focus on is the specific, once again, the specific expression that is repeated throughout this reading. He saw a man blind from birth. I think it's important for us brothers and sisters to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light of our lives. Baptism takes away that blindness from birth 
that all of us inherited in original sin. We are all like this blind man in the gospel, blind from birth, not just through some disease or some accident, losing our sight, but blind from birth on a totally different path without Jesus Christ. This whole story is our story. We are the man and the woman born blind, but brought to the light, brought to become the light in Jesus Christ. And as I pondered this reading and once again heard it proclaimed, what occurs to me and what I'd encourage all of us to return to and reflect on is that it speaks of a journey, a progression. Even as the blind man is able to see, even the way the Lord does that, it's not an instant of sight. It's a journey. He begins to be able to see, and then he sees more clearly. But even toward the end of this passage, he doesn't know really who Jesus is. Jesus asks him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And his answer, almost confusing in the context, he's just been made able to see. And yet his answer, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Still a lot of blindness there. The Son of God, the light of the world, standing before him, his ability to see for the first time in his life. And he says, who are you? Who is this who stands before me? And Jesus says so beautifully in his response. I can imagine almost with a smile on his face. You have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. And finally, the man born blind truly sees and responds, I do believe, Lord. That is our journey from baptism through confirmation, Eucharist, repeated, hopefully oft repeated confessions because we are all sinners. Let us be like this man born blind, able to begin to see through the sacraments of initiation. And let us joyfully continue this journey, whatever tomorrow brings, knowing that we are the light, joyfully living the light of Christ and being his light. Finally, brothers and sisters, I encourage, I urge, I charge everyone hearing my words to take up the mission of being light as those blessed with the light of truth in our Catholic faith. The world needs us like never before. Certainly, the deacons, priests, and bishops the consecrated religious. But the world needs those who were born blind, but have become light in Christ. Let us go out as we can on this Laudate Sunday. We may not be able to visit our neighbors, but we can pray, we can witness, We can visit the church individually. We can offer the rosary. Let us be light for a world in a darkness we've never seen. And let us trust and repeat the words of the man born blind. I do believe, Lord,
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Healed of his blindness, the man born blind proclaims, Lord, I believe. With that faith in Christ, the light of the world, we come to the Father in prayer. That Jesus Christ, the light of the world, may ever shine through the unity and charity and witness of his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus Christ, the light of the world, may empower and inflame the bishops and the priests and the deacons of the church to proclaim the gospel without compromise and to share the true faith with the nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus Christ, the light of the world, may enlighten the minds of our local, state, and national leaders and give them wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus Christ, the light of the world, may place his healing hand on the sick and guide the medical and public health professionals who are working to keep our communities safe from disease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus Christ, the light of the world, may renew our own living faith as we practice prayer and fasting and generosity, especially in this time when we cannot gather publicly together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus Christ, the light of the world, may guide us to appreciate more deeply and to hunger for his real presence in the most holy Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, may raise the dead to eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, your Son continues to reveal his saving truth. As we offer these prayers for others, deepen our response to his revelation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare the altar for the Eucharistic liturgy, dear friends, at this time of the Mass, when we usually present our offerings for the needs of our parish and ministries, I ask and encourage you to continue to support the church. Even though we cannot gather together physically, the sacramental ministry of our priests continues spiritually, as does the charitable work of our parishes in organizations like St. Vincent of Paul and Catholic Charities, work that many of you participate in and support generously and that will be needed even more in the coming weeks. Many of our parishes have the ability for online giving, or you can simply drop off or mail your regular offering to your parish. Please do so if you can. Soon the diocese will have a web page where you can contribute directly to your parish. And all of you are so very generous with your time, talents, and treasures. As your bishop, I am most grateful. God is 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for our praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end, a claim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbat, plenis uccelli et terra, gloria tua, osana in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, 
and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixus, Cornelian, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them is once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grants peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Many of you may have heard in the last days of spiritual communion, but you may not have very much idea of exactly what that is referring to. On my personal website, bishopstrickland.com, I've offered a beautiful explanation and some examples of spiritual communion from Father Gus Therapel, a beloved priest in the Tyler area. I'd encourage you to read what Father Gus has to say and enter into the beautiful tradition. It isn't something new. The church for centuries has taught the spiritual communion because there have always been circumstances where individuals or even communities or groups were not able to really receive the body of Christ in communion. So this beautiful tradition of spiritual communion as with most things in our beautiful Catholic faith, is ancient. As we pause for 
some quiet reflection now as I and the deacon have been blessed to receive the body of Christ. We offer our prayers for all of you unable to receive him physically, that spiritual communion, that transformation of our hearts in the light of the world might be a tremendous strength for all of us at this time. I want to offer a simple prayer for all of us to reflect on together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord, I invite you to visit the St. Philip Institute online with many school-aged children at home. The Institute has great resources to help you with keeping your children connected to the faith. A reminder that most of our churches are open during the day for private individual prayer and adoration. If you are able to make a visit, please observe all the limits and guidance that are in place for keeping everyone safe, especially the distancing and hand-washing guidelines. Finally, I encourage everyone to reach out to those who may be lonely during this time because of the need to stay at home. We are especially mindful of those who are vulnerable because of their age or health. A simple phone call or an offer to go to the grocery store can be a great act of compassion and charity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.